Apple quietly updated their power adapter lineup. You can now get, with your MacBook Air or your smaller MacBook Pro, a 70 watt power adapter. Why does this exist, and why not just stick with the 67 watt one they already had on the market? Is it just because Apple's Apple, and they can't have the same number as other people? Or is it because the higher wattage power adapter on a lower power laptop has an advantage over other power adapters? As usual, I'm going to go over some of the technical metrics for performance like efficiency, and Apple, as usual, does a good job with effective paper packaging. There's affiliate links which earn me a couple percent but cost you nothing in the description as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. There isn't much to see on the adapter itself. It almost looks identical to the others in the lineup. There is a difference when I put it up against the 67 watt adapter though. We'll talk about that later. When looking around on the Apple webpage, it looks like this adapter is offered as a faster charging option for those with the MacBook Air and as a standard offering for those with the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Apple offers several ways of using these adapters with the notebooks, you know, MagSafe or USB-C. The larger power adapter, the 140 watt, seems to be only offered with the larger MacBook Pro. The adapter has a bunch of marks on the sides. The things I am usually looking for here in the US are a safety mark of some kind and a six in a circle indicating that it meets some energy efficiency requirements laid out by the government. In this case, the adapter has both, so no issues there. It also has marking for many other countries, which is not a surprise as this adapter with its changeable input cord works all around the world. One thing Apple adapters do is when you use an extension cord, you gain an earth terminal. The little terminal inside the adapter is connected through to earth. In this case, it is connected with a one kilo ohm resistor. This is okay, but as supplied with a two pin connector, this is not connected to anything. Okay, so modes of operation and specifications. This power adapter has a lot less modes of operation. It is clearly made for what Apple needs. The adapter does over specify the 20 volt mode as 20.4 volts. So that is a little odd, but obviously it's what they needed. Of course, no 12 volt mode. The adapter cuts out at an overload level of about 78 watts, which is a safe limit in the case of any damage to your USB cord. The power adapter itself should be tolerant of a fault condition. Unplugging this adapter in, the idle power consumption for this power adapter is excellent, as is usually the case for Apple. This means that with this device plugged in, you will see little to no impact on your electric bill, whether this is plugged in or not. Of course, it's always better to disconnect things, but that can get annoying, right? It's time to talk about the power performance. This is where things look quite good for this adapter. It is very power efficient. It has excellent idle power consumption as we have seen, but not only that, at light loads, the adapter is also very efficient. So leaving your MagSafe cable plugged in isn't going to be costing you dollars a year. Of course, with these figures, it has no problems meeting the DOE efficiency numbers. On 230 volts and 50 hertz, this adapter is also good. The idle power climbs, but it is still very respectable. The efficiency sees a minor decrease overall, but is still a strong position of 92% overall. I'm not going to get into why this actually doesn't do better on 230 volts in this video. Next, it is time to talk about leakage current. This is the electricity that leaks through the unit and gives you that tingling feeling while working on your laptop. There isn't much to say about this really. Apple is very good here. All of their adapters excel here, which is not a surprise. Their laptop products are metal bodied, so you tend to be very well connected to the laptop, lowering the touch current potential. This is interesting because Apple products get used a lot in hospitals, but they are not explicitly medical grade. It looks like you'll end up with one of these high tech gadgets if you need that. 13 watt charging on USB-A, honestly less expensive than I thought for medical grade. There's a bunch of mistakes on the product page, see if you can find them all. Well, let's compare these things. The adapters are really great for idle performance, so in the grand scheme, they look good here. In this arena, I am talking less than one tenth of a watt, so essentially negligible power consumption. The wiring in your house can consume this much power, and if you leave your microwave plugged in, it's probably equal to 10 or 15 times more than one of these adapters. It is nice to see that Apple continues the trend here. In terms of the average performance, this adapter's average efficiency, specifically looking at the DOE6 efficiency, that means 25 to 100% load efficiency, is good. It gained nearly 1% of the efficiency on the older 67 watt power adapter. That's actually very impressive. So not only is Apple making a power adapter for their products, but they're also keeping them on the high side of the efficiency scale. This is something else. Okay, let's talk about value. It's Apple. It's not value they are after in the power adapter offerings. They are looking to offer a power adapter they don't have to deal with and will work well with the products they sell. It isn't a profit driver. It's just something they do out of support. 
The value is poor compared with the cheaper adapters, but these cheap adapters tend to not last long. Apple has a reputation of long-lasting power adapters and chargers. Do some fail? Of course, but they either hide it well or they fail less than others. I'm not sure. You could buy three of the Amazon Basic adapters for the price of this one though. It has excellent leakage, but the performance for real power is worse, so you be the judge on that one. Finally, the size and weight comparisons of these adapters. The power adapter is quite a lot smaller, and I think it is the real reason this has been released. The 67 watt adapter put next to the 70 watt adapter shows the size difference. The weight and size both saw an advantage in this switch and it gained a few extra watts on the diet. This adapter is still not that small and light, but it is an improvement and is a step in the consumer's choice of direction. Apple isn't winning an award for value or size here, but it looks like they are trying with this adapter going on a diet both size and weight wise versus the previous edition while gaining some power. What I think they are trying to do is sell you an adapter that works well with their products and hopefully will last a long time. My theory on that is by overdoing the capacitance values a bit, an argument can be made for extra safety factor. So in time, as this value falls, the adapter will still work. Now, what they did for the auxiliary capacitor, I don't know. If that's made a certain way, this might outlast me. Overall, this adapter is an excellent pairing for the devices it powers. There is maybe a place where it isn't the best choice. I will dive into that a little on Patreon, but for residential use, it's fine. It exceeds the standardized requirements, so I don't think you can ask for more from a company. This being a super high volume item, I don't expect it to be state of the art, but it's not far off. And I think the point is going for long-term stability and compatibility, and in the mix, they did achieve some positives, like low idle power consumption and real high power efficiency. This is a worthy replacement to the 60 7 watt adapter and it makes sense. Let me know if you will be using this adapter. I won't, but I am spoiled by choice. I have and use the 96 watt adapter and yeah, it's better. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Probably a few shorts and a couple weeks to the next long form video. Goodbye.